like eugenics programs that kill disabled people like we had during COVID, mm -hmm. where disabled people were like getting less priority for, for triage and that sort of thing. Um, I mean, it's like, it's not one step from here to there. There's like a lot in between that, but that's how you get from here to there, mm -hmm. right? By normalizing the dehumanization of certain people, right? So and also I wanna get clear. It's not a it's not the case that like an individ any individual at all who starts down here will get to here. Obviously, that's not true, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem is that the more individuals there are down here, right? Say you have say you have a million people who have racist attitudes and beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. That means you're going to have you know at least thousands of people who graduate up to microaggressions. From that, you're gonna have at least hundreds of people that graduate up to verbal abuse. And then from there, you're gonna have tens of people who do physical, I mean, you know, I'm not, this isn't exact numbers, but you get what I'm saying. And then that's how eventually you get to somebody who's committing a murder, mm -hmm. right? Does this make sense? So it's stochastic, it's talking about large numbers, it's systemic analysis, okay? So in our society, when we allow bigoted attitudes and beliefs to flourish, it makes it more likely for a smaller subset of society to perform microaggressions. And then the larger that subset becomes, the more likely it is for people to commit acts of verbal abuse. And then the more large that subset becomes, the more likely it is for members of that subset to perform physical abuse, et cetera, up to mass murder, okay? This is basically the essence of what I was arguing in the Pete Pipeline. It's very, I think it's common sense. I think it's obvious and the science backs it up. Let's talk about two news stories in two states that are very close to each other where we're seeing society graduate up to the higher levels of this pyramid. And I would argue being set up, we've already reached the murder stage and we're setting it up for the mass murder stage, I believe, okay? And I don't think I'm at all exaggerating when I say that. So let's, let's look at the stories that I'm talking about, okay? Uh, so first of all, we've got um, Florida first, okay? So here's a tweet that kind of sets this all up. Um, the original tweet from this person, Bobby, I don't know any of these people, by the way. It's just, I just thought these were good summaries of what's going on. Yeah. As a recap, and this is true, go ahead and do your own research. Florida has now made drag in public illegal as a sex crime against children, okay? Look at how these things connect. They have made sexual crimes against children punishable by death, mm -hmm. and they've begun allowing death penalty sentencing at an eight to four vote instead of a unanimous vote. Mm -hmm. So they've made it, they've essentially made being trans or dressing in drag a sex crime against yes, children, yes. right? This is how you can like metaphysically lead to, yeah. you know, mass murder. Yeah. First you make it a sex crime to be, to be a trans person, mm -hmm. to be trans, openly trans. Yes. Then you make it punishable by death. Then you make it easy to kill them. Yes. You make it easier to have a death exactly. sentence. All right, that's pretty. That's pretty straightforward. You can see what's happening here. This is absolutely dismal, and we've been saying we've been we've been telling you for years that this is coming. I've been showing the pyramid of violence for like four or five years now. Okay, and I've been begging people to pay attention. This is extremely important that we all understand what's happening here, how it happens and why it happens, okay? Uh, we have to build trans power. That's the only solution to this. The state is not going to help us. Joe Biden is not going to help us. It's very obvious. Hmm. Uh, voting is not going to help us. We have to build our own power, building power for ourselves and, and defending ourselves. They want us to be meek and afraid and begging for protection from the state and from the people who do have the power, right? Um, so of course that's going to happen to people, unfortunately. I don't like that that's true, but it's just true. In Florida, there's obviously, um, we've obviously gotten to the level where politicians like DeSantis and many others feel very comfortable verbally abusing trans people calling them sex criminals, right? We're definitely at a point where that's heavily normalized in Florida, right? Now, but there's another dynamic to this that I wanna talk about, which is the astroturfing nature of all this too, okay? Because what politicians like DeSantos and what right-wing lobbying groups and that sort of thing are trying to do is 
push people, push the Overton window to accelerate up to these pyramids of violence so that they will be allowed to commit violent acts when they're ready to do so. Let me explain what I mean by that. Most people in the USA don't hate trans people right now. Most people in the USA support LGBTQ plus people, statistically speaking. And most people oppose these kinds of laws. They get pushed through by a very small group, but a very powerful and wealthy group of lobbyists and special interest groups, religious fundamentalist groups, et cetera, that have ties to giant corporations, oil companies, et cetera. And, and, and you're going to see parallels between, okay. So there is a very small number of powerful, basically bourgeoisie level corporate interests, powerful, wealthy billionaires that are pushing these laws through against the will of the people. But they only, they don't need everyone on board. If you understand stochastic violence, you understand they don't need everyone on board. They just need a certain kind of like critical mass of people on board. They don't have to have everyone calling for mass murder to commit mass murder. They really only need people down here in like the verbal abuse section. If you could get you know, 35, 40% of the population up to where they're comfortable with, you're going to see that there's going to be much quicker acceptance of physical abuse, murder, and then mass murder. Okay, stochastically. So anyway, they don't need to get everybody on board with it. What they really need to do is get the majority of people to be silent and do nothing, Mm -hmm. right? And not rise up against this kind of shit. Which they do by through, for one thing, electoralism. Mm -hmm. And they do it through vote blue no no matter who style liberalism. They do it by Joe Biden being completely complicit and the Democrats being completely complicit in this shit. Where they might give a little bit of lip service, but they're not going to actually rise up and do anything. Remember that Joe Biden just passed, uh, just, just said that basically Joe Biden is not going, is going to allow states to prohibit trans kids from being on sports teams. Joe Biden is not on our side. The Democrats are not on our side. We have to rise up and make it clear that we're not going to accept this kind of bigotry in our communities. We have to normalize not normalizing prejudice. Does that make sense? Because they're steamrolling this stuff in against the will of the majority. And they're building a large enough block of people that are going high enough up the levels of the pyramid of violence that it's going to be... You, and it'll happen extremely fast. If you look at the history of fascism, it happens very fast. People go up this pyramid very fast, especially once the state and the wealthy people and the powerful people decide to make it a priority. Okay? That's why we have to build power and we have to fight this kind of bigotry at every level of the pyramid of violence. Okay?